last video I took you up to showing you the solution for part 2 which gave us a link to an executable file on the Can You Crack It website. This is the name of the executable list up there. And if you try to run it, it asks you for a license key. It asks you for a file called license.txt and we have no idea what this file should contain. So the only way to find out what the file should contain is to disassemble the executable and go through the instructions, the raw instructions inside the program and try and figure out what they do. Well roughly around here this is the entry point to the main function inside the program. If we scroll down it seems to do a number of things. The first set of instructions here check that you've passed a parameter to the program when you've called it which is the name of the host. If not it prints out an error message telling you how to use the program. You can then see it calls a function called fopen to try and open a licensed text file. If it doesn't open, it prints out an error message saying it couldn't find it. Then it calls a function called memset and it sets 18 in hex, that's the number of bytes, to null. So that looks like it's initialising a buffer of some kind and setting all the bytes in the buffer to zero. And then it calls a function called fscanf. If you look at this address here, this will give you the format string that's passed to fscamp, and it's just percent %s, so it means reading a string from the file, a string of text from the file. In fact, the way in which they've done this actually leaves a, um, a vulnerability in the program which would allow you to crash it, but it's not terribly important at this stage. Finally, close the file down. Then we look at the very first four bytes of the file, and we compare it to this number here in hex, if you convert this to ASCII, it's actually just the word letters GCHQ. So the very first part of the license file has to contain the letters GCHQ, otherwise it won't um, won't work. Then, as we scroll down, we call a function called crypt, which is, is a, a one-way hashing function used quite commonly on Unix systems for hashing passwords. And it says hash the next eight bytes of the file, because that's all the crypt function ex expects, and then compare it with a hash that's in the strings. If we to look at this memory address, there's a hash stored inside the program. It compares the hash that's generated from calling crypt on the stuff in the license text file with the hash that's stored inside the program. If they don't match, it prints out an error message, much like it did with the um, when it checked for the GCHQ bit up there. So if we've got GCHQ followed by 8 bytes which when hashed match something, match a hash inside this program then we've passed the first few stages and everything should be okay. So it prints out a couple of messages saying we've passed the first few stages and then as we scroll down the program constructs a web address. If we look at the strings down here, it constructs another get now the very first percent %s there, if you study the program, is just the hash that we had earlier, which is contained inside the program at the top of this list of strings, followed by three numbers in hexadecimal. Now, if you go through the program, you won't be able to find these three numbers anywhere inside. inside. It's essentially left as an exercise to you to try and find out where these three values come from. I remember when we were looking at stage one of the assignment, I said there was two instructions at the beginning which weren't used. This actually formed the first of those three numbers. If we look at the opcodes for these two instructions in a hex editor, there are the two, two bytes that make up the jump, which is the very first command in, inside the assembly code, and the next four bytes make up these two instructions here. So these four bytes there are the first number for them from that address. And the only way to find these is, is just through trial and error, remembering that these four bytes weren't used in, in stage one. And then the next question is, where do the extra two bytes come from? Well, there's a clue when you're looking at that uh, that, that, that uh, program that's executable from GCHQ, and so it says stage one and stage two uh, license. Well, if we look at part two of the assignment which GCHQ gave us, there's this rather odd line saying firmware with th uh, two numbers in it. Now this isn't referenced anywhere in the code and it's got real no real purpose whatsoever. Um, it, there's no need to use it to do to, to use the, v, uh, the, uh, the VM to code in the instructions or anything like that. 
Um, so th these two numbers are left obviously lying around um, and these two numbers actually make up the last two digits um, of that web address. We've seen some other solutions to this uh, problem on the internet. You'll notice a lot of people have tried to crack this hash for the very far first part of the address. Well, the hash is put in a verbatim straight into the URL, so there's no need to crack it. Um, some Russian guys got there first. The the actual pass of this cyberwin, and if you hash that with the correct salt, it will produce the hash. But we, we don't even need to do that. In fact, we don't even need to run this executable executable to solve the problem. So we're going to call www. Can you crack it? Dot uk slash. Then the hash, which is uh, here in the top. There it is. Slash the code from the first uh, stage and the codes from the second two stages. Just to go back a few steps, first of all, when I was going through the assembly for the executable from GCHQ, I thought it'd be useful to just construct a C program emulating how the program works. Um, and essentially it's how the same as how we went through in the assembly here. There's a check the arguments first of all, if so print out the usage stuff. There's initialization for of a buffer. Open a file, license.txt, read it in using fscanf. There it says there's a vulnerability there. Close the file and then look at the very first few bytes of the file and compare them to GCHQ. If not, print out an error message. Then look at the next eight bytes, run them through the crypt function with this uh, salt, and compare them with the hash which comes out the other side. If it doesn't work, print out an error message. And then finally, if everything's passed, construct a URL, get, and then slash the hash, and then slash these two numbers from stages one and then from stage two. So if we copy and paste this and put it back into the web browser. on the end there. So the very first part is the hash from the program code and if we put that in that gives us that. Then we need those far four bytes from the program at the very beginning. So these two the, the bytes which make up this bit here from the hex editor. And they're gonna have to go in reverse order because of the way the bytes work here, and the way it's interpreted by the processor. So it's gonna be A3 BFC2, BFC2, AF. And then the next part is to add the slash in, followed by these two numbers here without the 0x. Add these two numbers in and get rid of the 0x. And then if you remember back to the program, it was slash key.txt on the end. Hit enter. And there is the end of the assignments, and that's the last code. And if we go back to the main Can You Crack It website and type that in, Oops. Put the keyword in the end there and hit submit. So you did it, well done, congratulations. Please apply for a job at GCHQ. A rather disappointing end for quite a lot of work.